we're talking about a group of immigrants to the United States and how courageous they were. There's also interesting information on how early social workers helped immigrants in U.S. cities. Stay right here, please. We're starting our first look at the quickening of compassion cards, starting with card one. Remember, you don't have to purchase the cards or study guides to benefit from this video. But if you'd like to purchase the cards and study guide, you'll find information in the description below. We're using the photographs on the compassion cards to highlight groups and individuals from United States history with the goal of learning more about compassion and making our society a more compassionate place. Here's the first card with the caption, Immigrants huddled together on a ship sailing to the United States circa 1902. You should know that the photograph is done by William H. Rao, R-A-U, and is part of the Library of Congress High Demand Collection, where the image is referred to as immigrants coming to the land of promise. Let's just take a careful look at the overall scene. We see people on a ship deck. The accommodations are bare. People are crowded together and using blankets to keep warm outside while sitting or reclining on part of the ship's structure. Still, other people are walking across the deck. Everyone is dressed for cold weather. In the center of the photograph, there are five women and one man who are looking toward the camera. There are also two boys in the photograph, one with an injured left hand and the other apparently leaning over from fatigue or sleepiness. We don't know the nationalities of the people depicted in this card, but we do know that early 20th century immigrants to the United States, like the folks depicted in the card, came mainly from Southern and Eastern Europe, which included Italy, Greece, Hungary, Poland, and Russia. The reasons people came to the United States, of course, was varied, but certainly economic opportunity was a driving force for a majority. There was a technological revolution happening, so work in agriculture in Southern and Eastern Europe required fewer people. Meanwhile, U.S. textile, steel, coal, and automobile industries attracted labor. During the period between 1890 and 1910, the immigrant share of the United States population reached a historical peak of about 15%. But anyway, back to the people depicted. They were steerage class passengers, which was the lowest category of travel on long distance steamers. It was used by people who were very, very poor. In fact, the term steerage originated from passengers being placed in machinery parts of the ship. Beds were long shared bunks with straw mattresses and no linens except what people brought themselves. People were packed in the ship to improve profitability. Passenger mortality in steerage could be as high as 10%. I think it's fair to say that passengers in steerage, while driven by potential better opportunities in the United States, were probably a pretty courageous group of people and people who were determined to survive harsh conditions despite the obstacles. Immigrants from the era between 1900 and 1950 were from majority non-English speaking countries and often had a different culture and language from their new home in the United States. The U.S. had difficulty providing social support for these new immigrants who mostly went to the major cities like New York and Philadelphia where jobs were plentiful. Slums emerged in which conditions were often really bad. There was also anti-immigrant sentiment in the United States. It had many sources, but generally it was fueled by competition for jobs, housing, and public services, and also religious and cultural bias. For example, the Boston-based Immigration Restriction League was a primary promoter of the 1917 Immigration Act that required immigrants to pass a literacy test before entering the United States. 
That law provided that aliens were excluded from admission to the United States if they were over 16 years old, physically capable of reading, but unable to read English or some other language or dialect. On the screen, you can see an image of a literacy test card for people who spoke Ottoman Turkish. To compensate for the inability of cities and states to respond to growing social problems that were caused by overcrowding in cities, benevolent societies emerged that focused on child welfare and improving tenement housing. Those charitable entities were precursors to the schools of social work we have today. While there were people who did not like the new immigrants, there were others who wanted to help them improve their conditions and to thrive. That's a good example, I think, of compassion. Helping others in need simply because that's the right thing to do for our fellow human beings. But what do you think? We have two questions for you. Here's the first one. Do you have ancestors that came to the United States in steerage in the early 1900s? And second, today, why should we have compassion for people seeking to immigrate to the United States? Please let me know your answers below. And finally, if you'd like to dive in further, watch the short on this card where we'll talk about the principle of compassion and an activity to consider. So, Thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click to get notifications.